السلام عليكم ورحمة الله إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعين ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم الله سبحانه وتعالى the most high revealed the Quran to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم for mankind to believe in it and to accept it and to recite it and to act according to it and for us to act according to the Quran which is the duty on every Muslim we need to ponder over the Quran we need to ponder over the verses in the Quran one verse after another to get to know exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us and once we get to know that we have nothing but to submit ourselves to the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be obedient slaves of the Most High, the Creator of the heavens and the earth. And this is the duty of a Muslim. We are in Surah Al-Baqarah, towards the end of Surah Al-Baqarah, this blessed surah, the longest surah in the Quran. And we're still in the context of uh, charity and giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is a set of verses in Surah Al-Baqarah that ordering the believers to spend for the sake of Allah and the virtues of that and some of the manners and the etiquettes of how to preserve the charities and how to make sure that it's not rendered in vain uh, and, and all of that by following the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and honoring the poor when a person gives them the charity is to honor them not to cause any injury towards them emotional or elsewhere or anything that when it comes to reminding even of one's favors this is something that is forbidden as we heard before then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verses number 269 and 270 and 271 talking about certain things, one of which is the wisdom that we need to receive from the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and still some things related to charity and that the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted with everything that a person do for the person to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to make sure that the charity is given in the proper way according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. That whole entire religion of Islam, the life of a Muslim is done in such an attitude that a person you know for sure with certainty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted with everything that we do. So the deeds are done according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. So let's start with verse number 269 from Surah Al-Baqarah. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan rajim يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَمَنْ يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ Which means, he gives wisdom to whom he wills. And whoever has been given wisdom has certainly been given much good. And none will remember except those of understanding. يُؤْتِ الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gives wisdom to whoever he wills. First, before we get to know what is wisdom, and what is the meant by that, we see that this verse comes right after the verse that we talked about last time about the shaitan, Satan, promises you poverty. And how the context of the verse for those who are attached to this world, they might not understand it. Shaitan promises the person poverty when the shaitan basically adorns what is evil. Uh, but when we understood from the previous verse, that shaitan, Satan, he promises the people poverty by promising them wealth to make them uh, not to spend for the sake of Allah. When the shaitan would whisper to the person to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, promising them to have more wealth that way or to enjoy their life better that way, in reality, the shaitan is promising them the total opposite of that. The understanding or such understanding, this is a wisdom. The wisdom that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have. The wisdom that it is only known by the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
And that's why the ulama, when they talked about the definition of al-hikmah, or what is the wisdom meant in this verse, some of them said the Qur'an, some of them said the sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, and some said it's the proper knowledge that it's different from one situation to the other, the application of the knowledge. Basically the knowledge of the Qur'an, it's nasikh and mansukh, the abrogated verses, the understanding of the verses, how to apply the verses of the Qur'an, and so on. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed this wisdom to the Prophet sallallahu the Qur'an and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu that people would get to know that only through the revelation from Allah. So al-hikmah or wisdom and the definition of it is what pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing the outcome of things. A person can do something that can look very nice and very pleasant but it leads the person to their own uh, destruction. Would that be considered a wise move or a wise action for a person? Definitely not. The same thing if a person do something that might sounds good for the immediate sense of it, but then it leads the person to the hellfire. Would that act considered to be wisdom? Definitely not. So we need to redefine things according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. We cannot do anything actually proper on the face of earth unless we know the outcome of things, unless we we see the end result and, and what are we going to. And then after this life, it's either Jannah or Hellfire. So without the concept of the hereafter, everything will be distorted when it comes to knowing what is right and what is wrong, the understanding of things. So the real wisdom is when the person's understanding is based on the benefits of the hereafter, then the proper path will be or become very clear. It doesn't mean that we abandon this life. No, but things will be done on the face of earth accordingly so that we don't ruin the outcome of our actions and the everlasting life after, the, after this life. And it's definitely whoever do this, he will have the best of both worlds, the best of this life. And this is the real wisdom of things, because we as human beings, we have deficiency in getting to know the outcome of our actions. So we need the guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us through this and through this life. And that's what the knowledge and the wisdom is important for the Muslim to seek. Who is the one that gives this wisdom? It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. يؤتي الحكمة من يشاء He gives it to whoever he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever he wills, subhanahu wa ta'ala, but based on knowledge, on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, on the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since he's the most wise. So it's not just given to anyone, whoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills, without the wisdom of Allah, without the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or without the mercy of Allah, of course not. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most wise. So when we give, or when we see that some people are given the wisdom, this is by the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they deserve it. And as a result of that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knew that about them, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them the wisdom. And the same thing, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose from His creation the messengers, and choose from His creations those who would carry the work of the messengers, and this is definitely the highest level that a person can reach after the messengers of Allah is to be among those who convey the message of the messengers. يُؤْتِي الْحِكْمَةَ مَنْ يَشَاءَ It's a call for us to seek al-hikmah, to seek wisdom. To seek wisdom because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that gives it to whoever He wills. To seek it from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the book of Allah and the way of the Prophet والسلام, by seeking the knowledge of the religion of al-Islam. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showing the virtues of seeking uh, wisdom and to be given the wisdom from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَمَن يُؤْتَ الْحِكْمَةَ فَقَدْ أُوْتِيَ خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا Whoever is given al-hikmah or wisdom certainly has been given much good خَيْرًا كَثِيرًا خَيْرًا which is good uh, and كَثِيرًا uh, a lot of good uh, much good and all by the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as a result of receiving this hikmah when something is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means the best way to receive it is to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely and make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely that a person receive that wisdom, that a person would attain that wisdom uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ And none will remember except those of understanding. The proper remembrance, the proper reminder the reminder or the remembrance that would make the person do the action now according to the outcome of it. That's why those of understanding, the, those who have the proper and the sound mind are the ones that gets on benefits from the proper reminder. 
The difference between the human beings and animals, for example, animals, they don't have the ability to see the outcome of things, to make decisions based on uh, something that would happen in a month or in a year or two years or whatever there is. The human beings, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed his bounty unto them that makes it, this is the, one of the, if it's not the most uh, or the major differences between the human beings and animals. The animals, they desire things. Human beings, they have desires. Uh, they have, you know, um, p they feel pain. They feel otherwise. But what is the thing that differentiates the human beings and honors the human being is one intellectual abilities. It's for a person to see the outcome. And when a person sees the outcome is in such a way, then he would make an immediate decision that the actions might not be really pleasant for someone that doesn't know the outcome. You see, for example, someone that wants to earn money. So he has to work. So if somebody would take a screenshot, if it's correct to say that, while the person is in hard work, lifting heavy weights, for example, the person seeing that, he would say, why would that person choose to suffer? Why would a person suffer and carry heavy weights and, and sweat in his work and, and so on? This person, when he sees that shot only, he doesn't understand why this person is doing that. If he's following his desire, he would say this person is maybe insane, right? But this person, if you ask him, he made that decision based on the outcome, that he would get a paycheck at the end of the day, at the end of the month, at the end of the, the week. So he is willing to do something that is against his own desire because of something that is coming ahead. This is something unique to the human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us this way so that we would see the outcome not just at the end of the day or the end of the week, at the end of one's life, which is coming. No doubt about it. Everybody shall meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sooner or later. But it's something that is very soon because this life is very short anyway. So when a person have the hearts attached to this and having the revelation from Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the matter so clear that he showed the path of the believers and the path of the disbelievers. The outcome of the believers is this and the outcome of the disbelievers is this. Then a person to choose to make a decision now that he wants to be among those who seeks the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Wants to be among the believers, those who would enter the jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then what are their characteristics? What are the actions they need to perform on the face of earth? Patience and, and the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dutiful actions that he needs to fulfill and so on. A person is willing to do that. And it's not a whole life of suffering till the moment of death comes like many people would do with their worldly goals. It's the mercy of Allah that whoever is steadfast on the deen of Islam, he would enjoy this life. He would have a goodly life also. He would have a goodly life as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised man amila salihan. That whoever do righteous good deeds from male or female and he or she are believers, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a goodly life and they will be rewarded in the hereafter with the best of their deeds. So uh, to be content and to be comfortable that our purpose of our life is to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, those of uh, proper understanding are the people of sound minds. So the Quran again redefining for us who are the people with the sound mind. It's not necessarily the one that reached the highest level uh, in wealth or the one that has the, the, the most um, high degree on the face of earth. This is not necessarily the person that is the most wise. It's not the one that eloquently can speak about matters and the affairs of the people, right? Unless a person is obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then he has no wisdom whatsoever. Because all of this life will uh, be diminished and, and not valid. And the only thing that will be valid after this life is for those who are steadfast and obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُوا إِلَّا أُولُوا الْأَلْبَابِ Those who have the reminders are the people of sound understanding, sound mind. And these are the people that have, that have the wisdom, the proper wisdom that is given from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them to understand exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from them. So this is to praise wisdom, to, so the, to, to, to see the virtues of wisdom, that we need to seek that, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Then after that, in verse number 270, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is still in the context of giving, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that everything is by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So do things based on that fact that you are watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَارٍ Which means, and whatever you spend of expenditures or make of vows, indeed Allah knows of it, and for the wrongdoers there are no helpers. There are no helpers for the wrongdoers. إِنْ تُبُدُ الصَّدَقَاتِ If, right, this is an if statement, Right, that has a condition and an outcome to it. And uh, in Tubudu Sadaqat, if you would uh, show the charity, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, the, the previous verse, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ which means that any, whatever you spend, وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ there is no spend, any expenditure of any form of charity, anything. And that's why nafaqa is here, it's nakira, meaning that it's anything, even if it's very small. وَمَا أَنْفَقْتُمْ Which means whatever you spend of expenditures, anything, whether it's little or big, أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرِ And uh, any vow that you make, which are two acts of worship, spending and making vows, فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows of it. What does that mean? It means these are two acts of worship. نَفَقَ Spending and making a vow. We need to understand what it means. We need to understand the manners of it and how to fulfill it in the proper way. But we need to make sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, since He knows what we do, that we are being watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we have the sincerity. That we do it for the sake of Allah. And we do it in the proper way because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all watcher over us. We continue inshallah ta'ala with the meaning of this verse and the next one after the break. So stay with us inshallah. <laughs> Allah the Most High and Merciful says, Invite to the way of your Lord with wisdom and fair preaching. Do you want to join Huda in calling to Allah? Do you want to spread the message like the prophets did? Do you want to share in the blessings and rewards? Why not support Huda towards these noble aims? Why not sponsor a program of your choice? If you would like to help Huda in spreading the correct message of Islam, please send an email to support at huda.tv or call plus two zero one four three two seven one double seven one for more details or fax plus two zero two three eight triple five two five one. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulullah, still with verse number 270. And the uh, way that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to have in our hearts, witnessing the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that encompasses everything, to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that any act of worship that we do, spending from our wealth, making a vow, knowing for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. For us to make sure that we're sincere, doing things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, that we do it in the most perfect way, without causing harm to others, without showing off, without um, doing things that won't preserve our charity and our actions. So, nafaqa uh, and nadr, both are mentioned in this verse. Spending, for the sake of Allah. Many verses in the Qur'an that talks about spending, the virtues of it, and where to spend, how to spend our wealth. And this is something that the companions, radiallahu anhum, they ask the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that they ask you, O Prophet of Allah, what to spend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded to this. And in many verses in the Qur'an that talks about spending uh, on one's parents and one's uh, uh, dependencies, whether it's the wife, the children, the poor and the needy, uh, the, uh, for fighting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, in many different ways and the obligatory charity which is the zakah to certain and specific categories and things that can, might or come up uh, throughout life and later generations that of benefit people as long as it's halal and not harming others and not helping one other matters of sins definitely this is a great thing for a person to do so uh, spending we, we need to learn the etiquettes of it as we heard before in many verses in the Qur'an. About the nadhr or, or making a vow. Making a vow, the vow means that a person would make something 
that is uh, not obligatory thing, he would make it an obligation. For example, a person would make it an obligation on him that he would fast a certain amount of days. Right? This is not something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it obligatory on him. It's not the month of Ramadan, but he just, he would say in a statement, he has to utter that with one's word, that he would say that he would fast five days, for example, or Mondays and Thursdays for two months, something like this. Once a person would say that with his own words, this is a vow that he has to fulfill. Uh, and some people, they would make a conditional one, a conditional vow. Uh, and that is what the Prophet ﷺ said, this is what is extracted from the greedy ones. Greedy people, those who would not give for the sake of Allah, and the only time that they would give charity is when something good happens to them. So they would say, if I pass my exam, I would give charity, for example. If a person was sick and he would say, if I was uh, to be cured, I would give that in charity and so on. Uh, they should have uh, give in charity whether they are sick or healthy or passed or didn't pass or whatever there is. But if they say such a thing, then if it happened, then it becomes an obligation fard on them to give that. And they have to fulfill this vow. It is not uh, liked uh, for a person to do that. It's disliked. Some of them, even they said it's not permissible to do such a vow. But it is mandatory for a person to fulfill it. So uh, any of these acts of worship uh, whether it's uh, spending uh, from one's wealth or making a vow, know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows your actions, knows what you're doing, and knows your actions exactly. No matter how many people on the face of earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the unknowledgeable subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Muslims need to understand that this is an attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that refers to this attribute is Al-Alim. And the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala encompasses everything. The past, the future, the present, all places. Uh, and that's why if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows everything, then we need to look into the revelation from Allah from that perspective. And that the rulings that comes and governs the lives of the human beings, it's by the knowledge of Allah. It's not just to test us, but it's by the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the wisdom of Allah and the mercy of Allah. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Qur'an, أَلَا يَعْلَمُ مَنْ خَلَقَ وَهُوَ اللَّطِيفُ الْخَبِيرُ Doesn't he subhanahu wa ta'ala knows his creation? And of course he is subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a result of that, fulfill the orders of Allah because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. He knows best that belief is better for you, that salah is better for you, that what is halal is better for you, that staying away from haram is better for you, even if you think otherwise. So uh, this is the reaction or the attitude of a believer when he would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with regard to this name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al-alim and this attribute of the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَرِ And none, uh, or there is the, for, the, for the wrongdoers, there are no helpers. وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنصَرِ None for, or there is no helpers for the wrongdoers, and for the wrongdoers there are no helpers. See, the ظَالِمِينَ is mentioned first, which means, and for the wrongdoers, there's no help, helpers. What does that give you uh, when you compare this to there's no help for the wrongdoers? What is meant is to give the attention uh, to the dhalimeen, to the wrongdoers, the transgressors. There's no help for them. They are not helped. They think that they receive help by their transgression, by disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by showing off uh, their spending, uh, by receiving the fame or the praise of the human beings or by reminding others of their charities which is all a sinful act that makes the deeds rendered so they transgress whether it's with the context of nafaqa or spending or anything in large and that's why a zulm or transgression is uh, a person transgressing upon his own self and how can that be done if a person disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala instead of saving oneself from the hellfire then a person would subject himself to the punishment of Allah. This is injustice. And for a person to commit injustice against others, uh, in all types and forms of ways, whether it's by a word or by actions, this is all forms of injustices. So those dhalimeen, they have no help whatsoever, as long as they refer to as being dhalimeen, as long as they have that name. What does that mean? It means that if a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
And repenting to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from vulm, from transgression, uh, means that a person would have help, would receive the help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to make sure that our reaction to this verse, we need to make sure that we are not among the zalimi. We are not among those who transgress and commit injustices. How is that? Again, either we are being zalimi, either we are being unjust to our own self, and that we need to repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from sins. Sins makes the person unjust to, own, to one's own self. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and the earth. And when we use the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to commit sins and disobey him, this is injustice. Imagine someone is uh, doing that to his own uh, you know, uh, owner or whatever. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the owner of the heavens and the earth. And when a person would uh, commit sins and disobeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is definitely uh, an injustice. And shirk and associating partners with Allah and disbelief is the worst type of zulm whatsoever. In the zulma, in the shirk, the zulm is As Allah subhanahu wa taala says that a shirk associating partners with Allah is the major zulm, is a major injustice that a person would commit. So either a person is being zalim, is being a transgressor, as a result of committing sins on a personal level, or the well-known meaning of a zulm when a person is transgressing, committing injustice against others, oppressors, in all different levels of being oppressors. They have no helpers, in which they might think that they have helpers on the face of earth. But in reality, they help them to be more unjust. They help them to be more subjected to the punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the understanding of the verse, again, once we repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we are helped by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, In tansurullah yansurkum wa yuthabbit aqdamakum. If you... Give victory to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to the orders of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make you victorious. He will guide you, He will help you, and so on. وَمَا أَنْفَقُتُمْ مِنْ نَفَقَةٍ أَوْ نَذَرْتُمْ مِنْ نَذْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَعْلَمُ وَمَا لِلظَّالِمِينَ مِنْ أَنْصَرٍ This is the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that there is no help whatsoever for those who are zalimin. Then uh, the third verse uh, talks also about charity and about uh, the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted with everything that we do to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this level of al-ihsan that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if we see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if we don't see him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees us uh, the ayah number 271 Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in tubudu وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَيُكَفِّرُ عَنْكُمْ مِنْ سَيِّئَاتِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرٌ Which means, if you disclose your charitable expenditures, they are good. But if you conceal them and give them to the poor, it is better for you. And he will remove from you some of your mislead, misdeeds thereby. And Allah, with what you do, is fully acquainted. This is an if statement, in tubudu sadaqat. Something that is mentioned and the outcome of it. If you do something, there's a condition, and then the outcome of fulfilling this condition. In tubudu sadaqat. And this is from the Most High. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is informing us, for informing the believers, uh, that is something if it's done, then it's good. And uh, either one or the other, but according to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. In tubudu sadaqat. Tubudu sadaqat meaning that if you would uh, make it disclosed, make it uh, shown to the people, uh, or you hide it and you conceal it. We know that a person giving charity, that entitles two people. You're, there is a giver and there is someone that gives, receives the charity. So either this is done in a secretive manner, Nobody sees the person given the poor and the needy. Or it might be done openly. And there are many cases in this. For example, when the Prophet ﷺ uh, uh, called the companions of anhum to give for the sake of Allah. And he kept encouraging them, encouraging them till a man came and he brought and put in front of the Prophet ﷺ, uh, many different things. And he gave that all for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then people followed uh, the same way and they start giving and giving and the Prophet ﷺ gave the glad tidings to the first one that gave because he encouraged others 
He said that whoever do something in matters of the religion of Islam, uh, that he become a reason for people to give, then he gets the same reward that they get without diminishing any of their rewards. Why? Because this is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this man was given uh, openly, right, in front of everyone, which is a valid thing. It's a good thing. There's no harm in this whatsoever. And there's other type of charity in which a person would conceal it, making sure that nobody knows anything about it. And of course, the one that would receive the charity, sometimes he doesn't even know who is the one that gave him the charity. And by making sure that he conceals that, or it's only between the giver and the taker, that nobody else would know about it, nobody would see anything, and that's definitely better for the poor person, that he's not being uh, harmed in any way or form, that people would look down at him, that he's someone that is receiving the charity of others, and so on. Uh, some of the ulama, when they said it's, uh, it's a recommended that the charity is given openly, that is the obligatory charity, the zakah. The zakah is an obligation, and if a person is well known to be a rich man, that means he has to give uh, the zakat, the obligatory charity. So whether he conceals that or disclose it, it's something that is known that he has to give uh, the obligatory charity. So if it's a matter of encouraging others to give uh, the obligatory charity for the sake of Allah, uh, then definitely this is a good thing. Uh, or if it happened that you know he gave it and people watched that or something like that, as long as he's doing that sincerely for the sake of Allah, this is a good thing. But when it comes to the optional uh, charity, it's definitely recommended that a person would conceal it. Because it's optional, it's not mandatory. Uh, and when people conceal their mandatory spending, there is a care money, and, that, and people do not know anything about it, especially when we live at a time when there's nobody is coming to collect the zakah, uh, the obligatory charity like people used to do in the past. So if this is not there, then sometimes it's encouraging for others. It's known to the people that this is an obligatory charity that people need to give. But optional acts of worship, it's better to be avoided, meaning a person should conceal it and uh, try the best that a person doesn't uh, show people what they're doing so that a person protect himself from arriya, protecting oneself from showing off one's actions. So either you uh, disclose it, meaning that it's, it's good, there's no harm whatsoever, a person is rewarded, وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ If you conceal it, وَإِن تُخْفُوهَا Meaning concealing it. وَتُؤْتُوهَا الْفُقَرَاءَ And you give it to the poor. Concealing your charity and making sure that it reaches the poor. Because they are the ones that are in need of the charity. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala entrusted you with your wealth so that a portion of it does not belong to you. The portion of it which is the portion which is an obligation, the portion of the zakah, it is for the poor. It's not for the owner of the money. This is the obligation. So it's not for one's wealth. It's for the poor. So if they would conceal it and they would give it to the poor, فَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ This is better for you. And the reason why it's better, it's better for the person because it's uh, more into the side of being sincere. The person is helped this way to keep his intention sincerely done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not to receive fame as a result of being generous but to seek the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And to the extent of which, and we mentioned that before, that not even expecting anything from the poor, you concealed it, you made sure that nobody sees you or knows that you're giving the charity, but the poor person, he knows that in some cases. So that poor person, you should also make sure that you don't benefit anything from that person. You don't tell him, you know, uh, when he tell you, Jazakallah khayran, or may Allah reward you, or thank you very much, you should not tell him, you know, don't forget to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me. Like some people do. No, you should avoid that. You don't want anything from him. You're giving it for the sake of Allah. Even if the return is a dua, no, you don't say anything. If he makes dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you, this is something good, you didn't ask for it. Uh, and uh, let alone being someone asking for respect. Since I gave the poor a charity, so I expect him that he would respect me. That he would treat me better. Right? If he's a poor person working in the same institution that he's in, that means he would give him some more favors, right? Because he gave him charity. This is all not acceptable. A person should give the charity only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, so this is something that is very important. And it's better for the person this way. And we will continue inshallah ta'ala with the same verse and summarizing some of the rulings that we mentioned right after the break in the last segment. So stay with us inshallah. 
Allah mentions Arabic words in Quran 11 times. This might be a sign for us to know the importance of studying Quran and studying Arabic language because it's the door to know more about Quran. Ubay ibn Ka'b, one of the most important Sahabas, advised the Sahaba telling them, teach your children Arabic like you teach them to memorize Quran. See how important it was. And they are Arabs. Umar ibn Khattab, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be pleased with him, said, learn Arabic because it is part of your religion. Arabic is part of our religion. So how are we going to study Arabic and learn Arabic together in this course? This basic Arabic course contains seven levels, starting with the zero level, the ground level. Each level contains 13 sessions, 45 minutes each. And we have two quizzes in each uh, course. And we have the final exam. So inshallah, by this, our objectives is to have a very good domain of the Arabic uh, language, especially when it comes to reading Islamic books. So we're going to be introducing Islamic vocab uh, throughout the course. So go ahead, please, and enroll in our basic Arabic uh, course, as Arabic is the official language of more than 20 uh, countries. And Arabic is the key and the door of all Islamic sciences. So please do enter this door from the correct way, Arabic language. Hood Academy, your gateway to authentic Islamic knowledge. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam wa rasulullah. Still with verse 271, in these set of verses that still talks about the charity and giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and some of the etiquettes and the rulings. But the major one is that we need to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That we can do the, the deed physically, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts and a person out of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that He is protecting us from the evil within our own selves. So that if you sacrificed and you gave for the sake of Allah, preserve it. Preserve your charity. Don't waste it. Don't ruin it. You're giving it already for the sake of Allah. So don't lose the rewards by making sure that your heart is steadfast on being sincere and seeking help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted of what we do. So in this verse, uh, it shows that either you disclose the charity, it's a good thing still, but if you conceal it and you give it to the poor that way, this is better for you. And if a person would uh, disclose it, it's with the condition that you don't cause harm to the poor. You do not cause any injury to the poor by embarrassing the poor in front of the people when you give them in front of everyone. So uh, this is something that has to be observed. So uh, concealing it, it's better for the person. Uh, uh, and a person should also be careful. Sometimes the shaitan would whisper to the person, that uh, people would know that you're giving charity, so don't give charity. Because if there's no way for you to hide it, to conceal it, and the only way, for example, that somebody has to know about it, and the shaitan would whisper, then don't give the charity. Out of the fear that you would lose the rewards by basically falling into the riya or showing off. This is ways of shaitan. Uh, take it as a rule, as a principle. Anything that prevents the person from a good deed is an evil thing. It's definitely not a good thing. So a person in that case should give for the sake of Allah and uh, make sure that his intentions is sincere and to avoid the whispers of shaitan. That if you give charity, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would expiate your sins. Uh, some of the Ramah, when they talked about the, the context of this verse, you see, if you disclose the charity, it's good for you. If you conceal it and give it to the poor, it's better for you and he would expiate your sins. Is it referring expiation to the sins? Does that refer to concealing the charity and giving it to the poor? Exclusive? Or it's, when it comes to expiation of the sins, it's a result of giving charity in large, whether it's disclosed or being concealed. There's difference of opinion. And that's why there is a, a, a stopping uh, point here or a sign that either stop or continue. Uh, so uh, either way, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most merciful. And, and charity is a mean for the expiation of the sins, whether it's done openly or being concealed. If a person would be sincerely spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is a way to expiate one's sins. So this is a call from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to expiate our sins. If you have wealth, spend from your wealth with that intention. 
for the forgiveness of the sins as it's mentioned before, right? That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you forgiveness and bounty from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you would give for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, so it expiates the sins. We all have sins. Uh, no one is protected from sins after the Prophet sallallahu And as we mentioned that before, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decreed this is how the human beings are, so that they don't have arrogance in their hearts. That calls them to be humble. That all of us, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala treat us with His justice only, all of us deserves to be punished in the hellfire. No exception. After the Prophet ﷺ, we all deserve to be punished in the hellfire because we committed sins. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised those who repent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives all sins. Even if a person repents to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from disbelief, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the most forgiver. So the job of the believers is to constantly repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And also for the believers, if they die in the state of Al-Islam, if they die in the state of Al-Islam, either Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would forgive them, or if they are punished, they would eventually enter the Jannah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So expiation of the sins, it's a job in our life, that we need to take the means to expiate our sins. We need to get the knowledge of what expiates the sins. Some of the kafarat, some of the things that expiate the sins are a specific thing, like for example when it comes to uh, taking an oath or swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about something that would happen in the future and it didn't happen, then to expiate for such an oath is, uh, as we know from the Qur'an, is to uh, free a slave, if not then to uh, feed a poor person, if not then you fast three days. And the same thing with many other things mentioned in the Qur'an and in the way the Prophet والسلام, but here enlarge anything, any forms of sins, the ways to expiate the sins is to spend for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, also shows that the ones that expiate the sins is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's the owner of all things. That's why we turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone, uh, seeking help and seeking forgiveness and seeking expiation to one's sins. We do not turn to a pious man or to a righteous man or to a dead person or to a prophet. We turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And this is the oneness of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. All of what we heard, all of these actions and all of these good deeds that a person would do, whether it's done openly or secretively or, uh, you know, all of this, what we heard, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all acquainted of what we do. Wallahu bima ta'maluna khabir, which means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with what you do is fully acquainted. And this is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, al-khabir. The one that is uh, all and fully acquainted of what people do. Uh, the, he does not just see them, but he is all acquainted of what they do. You can see something, but you're not acquainted of what the person is doing. You're not encompassing what the person is doing. You can see something and you can be deceived. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, the most wise, the all-seer, al-khabir subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that is fully acquainted of what people do. So that means people need to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That he knows what's we, what we conceal in our hearts. We can deceive the human beings. We can look very pious. We can act very righteously. We can speak very nice. Right? But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what's in the hearts. And that's why we have to make sure that the hearts are sound. And as a result of that also, our outside appearance, our actions, uh, all of our affairs is done only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a beautiful thing that when a believer gets to know the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the attributes of Allah by reciting the Qur'an. Qur'an is a book of aqidah. It's the best book of aqidah. It's the best book of creed. And when a person would get to know the matters of belief, the matters of the unseen, the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, believing in them in the proper way, and there's nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and He's the all hearer, the all seer, not resembling any of these attributes to the attributes of the human beings. We do not deny them. We know the meaning of them. And we do not know how these attributes are. And this is the proper belief because we do not have any revelation when it comes to how that is. But we know the meaning of it and so on. The beauty of that is that we become true worshippers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His names and attributes. That's why the Prophet ﷺ said, لِلَّهِ تِسْعَةً وَتْسَعِينَ اسْمًا That to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 99 names that whoever man ahsaha dakhla al-jannah, whoever comprehend them or memorize them, 
he will enter Jannah. So this is a way to get to know the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is the difference between us as Muslims and other nations, other ways of life, the false religions and all of that. The major difference is in the subject of the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We see that the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's the most perfect names, the most perfect attributes. Nothing is the like of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You would find other nations, they belittle the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with many, many deficiencies that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't know what they're doing. As even some of the deviant sects, when they believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's knowledge does not encompass everything, that the human being is the one that creates their own actions, and as if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not know what they're doing. That uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbid us that some believe that he would change his mind. People would utter words of uh, deficiencies, referring that to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is uh, the worst crime that can be committed on the face of earth. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قَالَتِ الْيَهُودُ يَدُ اللَّهِ مَغْلُولَ When the Jews said about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that his hand is tight, uh, claiming that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala curse them that he is greedy. It's mentioned in the Quran. Or when they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as having a son. right? This is all forms of deficiencies. That resembling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the human beings with all their deficiencies. That a human being, as it's mentioned, Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary alayhi salam, a messenger of Allah, one of the great messengers of Allah. But when people would think that they would elevate him into the level of being God or the Son of God, and then he comes and, and walks on the face of earth and he's hungry, the Most High subhanahu wa ta'ala is in need of his creation, that he's hungry and he eats and then he relieves himself. How can that be the God, the creator of the heavens and the earth? These are all forms of deficiencies that people believe and they, and they refer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is something that is very sad for the human beings to fall into such away when we look into the deen of Islam. You see how the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most high, nothing is the like of him subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he is the most uh, high, the all-seer, the all-knower subhanahu wa ta'ala, the most merciful, uh, the, the, the one that is capable of all things, and so on and so forth, and one of which that he is al-khadir. Any actions we do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is acquainted when it comes to these actions. So we need to be truly watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You see that in these verses, we are uh, raised and taught to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be watchful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, to reach that level of al-ihsan, to reach the highest level of the deen. We know that the three levels of the deen is al-islam, al-iman, al-ihsan. Al-islam and al-iman and al-ihsan. The highest level in which a person would worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if he sees Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if he doesn't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sees him. So how would be the affairs of such a person? And uh, as we said before, that a level of al-ihsan, some ulama said that it's even two levels together. The first one, you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's it. As if you see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Of course, no human being can see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the face of earth. It's only in the hereafter that the believers would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But on the face of earth, they won't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But imagine one's actions as if he is seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How his actions would be with the perfect love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what uh, the Prophet sallam, the Quran mentions that, that when the believers, they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment, in Jannah, this is the most joyful experience they would ever have in Jannah. Jannah is not just about the Hur al-Ain and the food and the drink and so on. The most enjoyable thing for the believers in Jannah is when they see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us all among those who see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the day of judgment. So imagine someone on the face of earth, which is of course not, would ever happen, but the hadith says as if you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your actions will be like what? And if you don't see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know for sure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is seeing you. So the outcome is that a person will have the fear of Allah, seeking the rewards from Allah, the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in one's heart, and that is all needed when it comes to spending for the sake of Allah, to overcome the greediness in ourselves. That comes true when it comes to giving anything for the sake of Allah, even our life 
for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We would give that for the sake of Allah because this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. We need all of these different acts of worship and deeds done by the heart and uh, giving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us or to give us the proper understanding and to comprehend the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be obedient to Allah and to be steadfast on the deen of Islam. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa barak ala Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا أَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ وَلَوْ كَانَ مِنْ عِنْدِ غَيْرِ اللَّهِ لَوَجَدُوا فِيهِ اخْتِلَافًا كَثِيرًا